Our team of reporters at TYT broke a story regarding the Office of Refugee Resettlement and how the government has given pretty lucrative contracts to organizations that detain undocumented children. Now, the big question here, though, is. Are these government contracts worth it? And are they being given to the right corporations that do their jobs in a lawful way? It appears that that is not the case with at least four of these corporations. So let's get into the details of that. According to the reporting by Alex Koch, the US government has paid at least four private companies that have been accused of physical or sexual abuse or discrimination to help transport or house undocumented children from Central and South America. So who are these contractors? What have they done? The contractors include three shelters and one company involved in transporting detained children. The companies have won contracts worth tens of millions of dollars. That's taxpayer money. Complaints against them range from as far back as 2001 to as recently as this year. So I'm gonna give you specific details that really stood out to me on two of these corporations. There's the Shiloh Treatment Center in Texas. It received over nine. $9.1 million in unaccompanied alien children in this unaccompanied alien children program, HHS contracts that began in February 2017 and conclude in January of 2020. By the way, they also received a pretty fat contract under the Obama administration to the tune of $16.6 million. That contract ended in 2017. Now, uh, officials in Texas had been investigating this organization and they found a wide array of abuses. So they documented a host of physical abuses by Shiloh staff. One child died in 2001 due to exertion from being restrained. The Office of Refugee Resettlement reportedly later found Shiloh to be, quote, in compliance with state requirements. However, if you look at other cases involving this corporation, its owner, Clay Dean Hill, owned another company, Daystar Residential, where at least two children died. A 15-year-old girl died of asphyxiation in 2002. Another teen died in 2010 while being restrained inside a closet. Nice to know that our taxpayer money goes toward people like this. So uh, he, that was his previous company. He says that he learned a lot from that and that they uh, are sought to make improvements. Uh, that's what uh, he told the Houston Chronicle. So look, um, unaccompanied minors come into the country from time to time. This is, as Anna pointed out in the earlier story that we did today, uh, not specific to Donald Trump. Trump wants to separate families that come together with kids. That's a different issue. Uh, unaccompanied minors came in under Obama and Trump, and they have to do something with them. And they, sometimes it requires transportation, sometimes it requires sheltering them somewhere. So you have to have these companies that do that, it's understandable. Um, but I think that it makes sense that we require that those companies be very careful. Uh, and the problem with guarding anyone is that you, you've got the, the same problem that uh, comes out of what we learned in the Stanford prison experiment, which is that even if they're kids, even if they uh, didn't Powerless. do anything wrong, mm -hmm. they're not criminals, they didn't get convicted of anything. Once you're housing people and you are guarding over them, human nature sets in and you feel like you have to control them, right? Which then sometimes leads to abuses like the ones that are being documented. But then it's incumbent upon the government, both under the Obama administration and the Trump administration, to be exceedingly careful and to say that no, you're not allowed to put the kids in closets, you're not allowed to do these kinds of punishments, you're not allowed to do all these things to the kids because they didn't do anything wrong. Even if they were adults and they had done something wrong, you still couldn't do that to them, right? Mm -hmm. That would, a lot of these would be cruel and unusual punishment, etc. Now I understand that some of it goes back to 2001, but some of the offenses are as recent as last year. So it's, when you're dealing with kids, you have a higher responsibility to make sure that the abuse does not happen. Why is it that when it comes to corporations that seek government contracts, I mean, again, government contracts that are funded by our taxpayer money, for some reason, their wrongdoing or wrongdoings from, I don't know, 10 years ago, 20 years ago, doesn't matter at all. We're talking about kids who died under their care. But hey, guess what? The owner decided to do a little rebranding and said he was sorry. So 
Two people died, not that big of a deal, just some children who are powerless. Since he changed the name of his corporation, let's hand him some more government contracts. I don't care if he said he learned a lot from the past. In no other environment, work environment, does someone get rewarded later on after they rebrand themselves and say, hey, you know what, it's okay, I've learned a lot. I won't let any other children die under my care, even though there was an example of another child dying under his care. In the new company. In the new company, but yes. I don't care if it's a new company. That just means that it's a rebranded entity. It doesn't matter. So look, and sometimes these are difficult because when somebody starts a new company and goes, well, that's not the old company, then how are you gonna deal with that and how long is that guy not going to be allowed to get government contracts, etc. So I would say a long time, but I get that that's sometimes a difficult process. But there's also one more thing that's unsettling here, which is that these corporations have extra rights that, that human beings don't have. If you got convicted of crimes like this, mm -hmm. you'd be in a world of trouble. And, and you would be on a lot of, when the physical abuse cases, the well, you'd be on a list and you, you couldn't do a great number of things. You couldn't live in a lot of places, right? Um, but when a company does it, well, I mean, it gets all of our rights, but it gets also the extra right of it doesn't go to prison. It doesn't face any consequences, and then it gets government contracts again. So Look, I, this makes no sense. They get government contracts, and one thing that I just really want to emphasize and I want people to understand, immigration detention is big business in the United States. This is not about saving resources and saving jobs in the US. This is about ensuring that private prisons and corporations like the ones that were covered by TYT Investigates get tens of millions of dollars in government contracts to detain or or transport people who come into the country illegally. That's all it's about. It's not about protecting you as an American citizen. It's a way of distracting you from real issues and the real people who screw you over. Those are those those people at the very top who get these massive contracts to begin with. And, and that's it. I mean, I, I just I want people to wake up and focus on the real people that are hurting us, not the powerless people who are literally being abused and in some cases murdered in, in this type of detention. So uh, in, in one of the cases, uh, another company, International Educational Services, uh, they've got, uh, they had two uh, shelters in Los Fresnos, which is about 15 miles from the border. And, and the monitor actually did some great original reporting back in March about this. And uh, they said that during the past two years, the Texas Department of Health and Human Services, now that's the Texas Department of Health and Human Services, right? Uh, clearly under Republican administrations, has inspected the facilities 349 times and discovered a total of 116 deficiencies that include a range of inappropriate sexual behavior, lapses in foster care, home oversight, problems with administering medical care and improper punishment of children. So look, they shut those two places, uh, particular shelters down. But overall for corporations, whether it's a giant bank that rips off its customers time after time after time and then gets government contracts anyway, right? Or defense contractors that uh, have billions of dollars in fraud and continue to get government contracts. Or it's people who are uh, companies that are uh, supposed to be looking after kids that have all these abuses, they still get the government contracts. Mm -hmm. And that's our taxpayer dollars being used. And and it's it, it's obviously an outrage. And uh, and then I'm uh, proud of uh, Alex Koch and, and the TYT Investigates team for uncovering this. You should know what's happening uh, to those kids. Two easy ways to follow the Young Turks. One is hit the subscribe button down below. Uh, then you're a TYT subscriber, and second is ring the bell. And when you do that on YouTube, you're notified of our videos.